Today on the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast, we are talking about how to overcome defeat when you're losing weight. So on the podcast today, I'm going to give you five tips to overcome defeat and lose those inches for good. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. My name is Nicole Simonin and I am so glad that you're here. We are going to be talking about how to overcome defeat while losing weight because, you know, when you're losing weight, you can feel very defeated and very beat down. But before we dive into that, I want to read one of the reviews on Apple Podcast. So this review comes in from Janelle. It says, we need this great resource. Nicole shares valuable information that we women need in our midlives when that postmenopausal weight shows up and it's impossible to get off. She zeroes in on great topics and gives useful tips. Thank you so much for Del- Janelle for leaving your review. And if you guys are loving the podcast, I want to hear from you. Head over to Apple Podcasts and look up Shape It Up. Make sure you subscribe and leave me a review. Yours might be the next one that I read on the podcast. All right, so let's dive into today's topic. So again, overcoming defeat while losing weight. We beat ourselves up so much when we go about losing weight. So I'm gonna give you five tips on how to overcome that. So the first thing that I like to tell my clients is you need to think of yourself as a science experiment. You have to take the emotional part out of it. You can call it food drama, you can call it workout drama, whatever you wanna call it. I love calling it drama. Just no more drama in your life. So if you quote unquote fall off the wagon, which by the way, there is no wagon, you've either decided to head towards your goals or you haven't. But we know that, I know that that phrase is very common. I hear it a lot. But when you quote unquote fall off the wagon, look for triggers that may have led you in the direction that you chose. So maybe you had a rough day at work or your kids just won't stop arguing. And the next thing you know, you're finding yourself diving headfirst into a pint of haagen But a lapse doesn't mean that it's all over. You can overcome the defeat of making the choices that you do. You've heard me talk before about your primitive brain and your sophisticated brain. So just a little recap. The primitive brain is basically there to keep you alive. It really only knows pleasure and pain. And the primitive brain wants you to avoid pain at all costs. It wants to revel in pleasure all day long. It also likes efficiency. So anything that isn't the norm, it's going to retaliate against. Your sophisticated brain, which is your prefrontal cortex, has aspirations and dreams and goals for you. This is the side of the brain that you want to tap into as much as possible. But when your sophisticated brain sets a goal to lose weight, your primitive brain will start freaking out and start telling you how bad this idea is. Why does it do this? I really don't know. (laughs) But (laughs) because um, of the primitive brain and what it does, meaning looks for pleasure, avoids pain, you got to get uncomfortable to reach your goals. And your primitive brain does not want to do that. You need to overcome defeat. You need to look fear in the face and do it anyway. And what does your primitive brain want to do? Yeah, that's right. It wants to avoid pain and go straight to pleasure. It wants you to sit on the couch, watch Netflix, and eat chips all day. (laughs) This is where your slip-ups are going to happen. When your primitive brain gains control of the wheel, when you push through your goal, your primitive brain will start coming up with all kinds of reasons why your goal is a bad idea. And even worse, it's going to start scanning your past for all the failures you've made saying, of course you can't do this. Remember the last time you tried to lose weight? Yeah, see where that led you? Or how many diets have you tried before and they all left you gaining weight? Your brain is going to tell you all this stuff. So here are the five tips on how to push through and overcome defeat. Set yourself up for success. So pick a realistic goal. If you decide you want to prep your food for the week, but this week the only time that you're home is when you're sleeping, then food prepping might not be your best option. I absolutely love big goals. I love making such big goals that you almost kind of like want to vomit. <laughs> like it's that's kind of scary. But to overcome defeat, you need to have smaller goals to lead up to that big scary goal. 
especially if you're just starting out, especially if you tried a million diets and you've, you've quote unquote failed every single one. So pick a small goal that you know you can accomplish. Say for instance, you drink a gallon of soda every day and then you decide that by cutting back on soda, you're gonna start to lose weight and feel better. And professional side note, if you are a heavy soda drinker and you cut that out, you will drop weight fairly quickly. So say you drank a gallon of soda every day and you decide to go cold turkey. No more soda. By day three, your knuckles are probably white and your willpower is completely exhausted. So of course, what do you wanna do? You go back and drink the gallon of soda. Again, your primitive brain does not like pain. It's gonna be like, why the heck did you choose to not have soda? This is makes me feel good. This is good stuff, <laughs> right? It brings me pleasure. But maybe instead of going cold turkey, you still drink a gallon of soda, but each time you drink it, you add water to it. And each time you, you know, say you do that for a week and then each week you add more water to it. Eventually you're gonna be drinking water flavored soda, like with a drop of soda. And eventually you may not even want the soda at all. If you slowly keep switching out the soda for water, eventually you're gonna get to the point where you're just drinking water. This is not only good for your body, but it also allows your mind to adapt slowly and acclimate your taste buds. And suddenly you're gonna realize that you've overcome defeat and also soda. So pick smaller goals that you know you can accomplish and keep building on them as you feel they get easier. Second tip, take immediate action. If you have a slip up or you quote unquote have fallen off the wagon, don't beat yourself up over it. Acknowledge what you did from a non-judgmental space and, and how can you learn from it? It's easy to let small slip ups turn into a week long landslide. Usually when you slip up, the problem isn't the actual slip up, it's those horrible thoughts that we start thinking about ourselves. So if you ate six donuts, it's totally neutral. It's what you think about eating those six donuts that can make or break you. It literally takes a split second to get back on track. You just need to change the way you think about it. And I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but it really is that simple. My next tip is ditch the perfectionism. I think this idea of being perfect on a diet came from fad diets. That, you know, they demand that you must eat exactly what is laid out on this diet plan or you will be doomed to fail. I mean, how many diets have you tried that are, you may only eat these specific foods, you may only eat at this specific time. It's so rigid. And unless you can follow that for the rest of your life, that is not the plan for you. If you get nothing else from this podcast, please get this. You can still eat your favorite foods and go out to eat and have cake and have chocolate and still lose weight. You, of course, are going to eat overeat from time to time. You will have a donut. You will have chocolate. You will get sick. You will have obstacles in your way. This is not a perfect process. And when you attempt you know, going into weight loss, it's, it's not going to be perfect. So the next step is embrace failure. You're going to fall flat on your face when you start your weight loss journey. It's just a given. You just might as well <laughs> accept that because if it was easy, everyone would be healthy and fit. I wouldn't have a job. You know, people would be, there wouldn't be all the drug manufacturers in the world. You know, we, we would, it would be not an issue. So use those failures to observe what happened and learn from it. As long as you're failing because you're trying and you're like going for it, that's all good. If you're failing because you just aren't showing up and you're just not trying, that's a different story. Don't give in to your brain demanding that you need to play it safe. Every single one of you listening to this podcast can lose weight. Even if you're over 40, even if you quote unquote have bad genes, even if you have 40 or more pounds to lose, even if you have 100 pounds to lose, you can lose the weight. Next tip is course correction. Now, I am not an airline pilot, but I do know that when you get an airplane and you're going to a destination, it does not fly in one straight line. 
It has to make subtle adjustments and tiny course corrections along its flight path so it can get to its destination, right? It's avoiding obstacles, it's avoiding air patterns, it's avoiding the other planes in the sky. This is one of the things that I love about my job so much. It's the subtle changes that I make for my clients that help them stay on course because every client is unique. Every person that comes to me that I work with has a different upbringing. They have a different background. They have a different way of thinking about things. They're just different and that's what's beautiful about us. There's no two people that are exactly alike. So when something isn't working, you just need to course correct. You don't need to beat yourself up. You don't need to tell your self all the things that you did wrong you don't need to call yourself a failure or you know you just course correct it, can you imagine taking off in a plane and instead of doing the subtle course corrections that they the pilot does if the pilot jerked the yoke too far to the left and then it jerked it all the way to the right and then it pulled back and went straight up in the sky or straight down it would be the bumpiest, insane airplane ride ever. You'd be scared to death. But this is what we do with weight loss. Instead of doing subtle changes, we drift all the way from all or nothing, right? We drift all the way to the right. We drift all the way to the left. And it's so extreme. You know, like you're either on the diet and you're sacrificing and deprivation or you're not and you're overeating and you're consuming all this food. You have to take those little course corrections instead of those big adjustments. Now can you imagine how much time have you wasted beating yourself up over what you did wrong and thinking that it makes you a failure and doing all these drastic course corrections? If you take a second to examine what happened from a non-judgmental space and you make a small adjustment, you get right back on track. So when you decide to make huge changes, your brain will try to talk you out of it every single time. And if you have just made the declaration that you are ready to lose weight, you may notice that all kinds of stuff are going to start coming at you. Like you're going to get sick. You're going to get injured. Some family issues are going to arise. You're going to get a flat tire. (laughs) All these crazy things are going to happen to you. And you're going to think that this is a sign that you should stop. And I want to encourage you that this is a sign that's testing you to see how badly you want to lose that weight. So when you stay the course, when all this stuff is happening, all this crap is getting sent to you, you're going to be more resilient when you go through these obstacles, when everything is calm. So even if you don't stay the course, it has nothing to do with your worth as a human being. You have value and worth no matter what size you are, no matter what size jeans you have, no matter what size dress you wear. Maybe you just need to make some small adjustments. Or you might not have the correct information that you need. And really remember this, it only takes a split second, one new thought, to get you back on track. So you are never more than a second away from reaching your goals. So just to recap, remember you want to be the scientist. You want to look at yourself as a science experiment. Take the drama out of everything. Set yourself up for success. Pick realistic goals that you think you can accomplish, but don't forget that big scary goal. Go for that as well. Take action on on your course corrections. Dip, 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 ditch perfectionism. Embrace failure and course correct. That's the bottom line to everything, right? This is a process. Remember, if it was easy, everybody would be healthy and nobody would be overweight. No one would have food issues. If you are loving this podcast and the information that I'm giving you is resonating with you and you want to know more, book a call with me. I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. We don't do crazy diets and we don't do insane workouts. If you are a woman over 40 who are looking to lose 40 or more pounds, I want to encourage you to book a call with me. We'll just chat about where you're at and what you're looking for and we'll see if we're a good fit for each other. And if we're not, 
it's okay. But I want to encourage you to book that call at shapeitupfitness.com. And I also want you to know that it is guaranteed that you're going to lose 40 pounds if you work with me. If not, you get your money back. So if you're interested in learning more, head to shapeitupfitness.com and book a call. All right, I will talk to everyone next week.